Beginning in June of 1965, Los Angeles critic Ray Marcus began working on a detail of an assassination photograph taken by this woman, Mary Mormon. The photograph showed President Kennedy at the moment he was hit in the head, and a close study may reveal the true assassins. A critic named David Lifton first noticed the detail. He and Marcus identified several more and numbered them left to right across the photograph. The most intriguing detail was a fifth one to the far right of the picture, up above the helmet of a motorcycle cop in the foreground. There, hidden in the murky shadows of the grassy knoll, there appeared to be a human figure holding an elongated object, possibly a rifle. Referred to by Marcus and Lifton as Number Five Man, this seldom seen detail was published in 1967 in an alternative weekly called the Los Angeles Free Press and is not to be confused with a similar image sometimes called Badge Man. Shortly after the Free Press published it, Warren Commission staff attorney Joseph Ball was asked about number five man during an interview. There's obviously no man in the picture. Well, the copies I saw, the, the copies I saw of the picture are pretty darn convincing. Ah, and, uh, oh, Christ, you can imagine anything. Did you ever take the Rorschach test? You can see all kinds of things in shadows. Ray Marcus also studied Commission Exhibit 399, the bullet that the Warren Commission said passed through JFK and into Governor John Conley, causing multiple wounds in both. This was the single bullet theory, and it was central to the Warren Commission's case. Marcus compared 399, which had supposedly caused so much damage, to an identical bullet seen here on the left, which the FBI had test-fired only through the wrist of a cadaver. He further studied the bullet and its chain of possession. My own conclusion at the end is that bullet 399 to an extremely high degree of probability was planted. I think that emerges from an objective study of the evidence. Publicizing these findings remained an obstacle. Marcus wrote about 399 in a monograph called The Bastard Bullet. Harold Weisberg also self-published his work. Penn Jones wrote editorials for his paper, The Midlothian Mirror, and later published them in book form. Other critics got their work in small publications like Liberation and The Minority of One. And in time, some did reach the mainstream. Mark Lane's Rush to Judgment was a bestseller in 1966. Still, media powerhouses like Time Life and CBS remained vocal advocates of the Warren Report. Lee Harvey Oswald, alone and for reasons all his own, shot and killed President Kennedy. It is too much to expect that the critics of the Warren Report will be satisfied with the conclusion CBS News has reached, any more than they were satisfied with the conclusions the Commission reached. CBS did, however, give at least some attention to opposing points of view. As we take up whether or not America should believe the Warren Report, we'll hear first from the man who, perhaps more than any other, is responsible for the question being asked. Mark Lane, lawyer and former New York State Assemblyman, was the gadfly of the Warren Commission. He demanded the right to appear before it as a defense counsel for the dead Lee Harvey Oswald. Refused, he began his own investigation of the president's death. A study that produced first the best-selling attack on the Warren Commission, Rush to Judgment, and now a movie of the same name. Mark Lane has lectured all over the world on his own theories of the assassination, theories which he spelled out for Bill Stout. There was one conclusion, one basic conclusion that the commission reached, I think, which can be supported by the facts, and that was the commission's conclusion that uh, Ruby killed Oswald. But of course, that took place on television. It would have been very difficult to deny that. But outside of that, there's not an important conclusion which can be supported by the facts, and, and this is the problem. And uh, what the commission was thinking and what they were doing is still hidden from us, of course. The minutes of the commission meetings are locked up in the National Archives, and no one can see them. A vast uh, amount of the evidence, FBI reports, CIA reports, which may be uh, directly related to the information we should have, are also locked up in the archives. No one can see that. The photographs and x-rays of the president's body taken at the autopsy in Bethesda, Maryland, uh, taken just before the autopsy was begun, taken by naval technicians, which in and of themselves might resolve the whole question as to whether or not there was a conspiracy, cannot be seen by anyone today. And, in fact, not one member of the Warren Commission ever saw the most important documents in the case, the photographs and the x-rays, and not one lawyer for the commission ever saw it, was curious enough to uh, examine the most important evidence. I think the villain was the desire of government officials to be nice, 
to see to it that uh, nothing would upset the American people, that the apathy which has seized us for all of these years be permitted to remain uninterrupted by a, a factual presentation of what happened. I hoped that this was going to be an honest effort on the part of the commission because uh, there was no question uh, in my mind uh, that they would have the ability, if they wanted to, to uh, clear up the questions. But uh, each day uh, it was clear that that wasn't going to be the case. By 1966, Vince Salandria was convinced that a power elite from within the government itself had assassinated President Kennedy. He determined this after learning that as the presidential jet flew back to Washington from Dallas only hours after the assassination, its occupants were told via radio by the White House Situation Room that there had been no conspiracy. On the plane back, the presidential party, from Love to Andrews Air Force Base, there was a report from the Situation Room of the White House that Oswald was apprehended. Oswald killed the president. There was no conspiracy. That was before there was any evidence against Oswald. Early in 1967, it seemed the critics would be vindicated after the electrifying news that the case was being officially reopened, that the district attorney of New Orleans had launched his own investigation into the murder of JFK. Jim Garrison's investigation was controversial from the very start. Some of the critics became closely allied with it, including Harold Weisberg, Mark Lane, and Vince Salandria. It was a sensational development, and among the critics, Jim Garrison elicited strong reactions. Sylvia Marr was not a Garrison supporter. Certainly those who were skeptical of the Warren report uh, must find it a great temptation to believe Mr. Garrison. But the fact that somebody is fighting the Warren report is no guarantee in itself that he is pursuing proper rules of evidence or that he has uh, uh, clean motives. For better or worse, Jim Garrison's investigation failed, and afterward, some of the early critics withdrew from active involvement in the case. But as a group, their immediate understanding that a conspiracy had resulted in the assassination of President Kennedy remained intact. If you want to know what they killed them for, you can certainly say that to get different policies in the, in the White House was a possibility. We don't know these things because the crime was never investigated, but you can't ignore it. We all know, I submit, at some level, what happened in Dilly Plaza. We all know what was behind it. We all know that they are still in power when we are willing to act like people who know should act as responsible citizens, rising up and not tolerating this abuse of power, this manipulation of people, then the world will change for the better. I hear from a lot of young people who tell me they were not born at the time Kennedy died and they express their love for the man and their unease about the whole thing. I hear from many of those who say I was eight, ten years old, as well as many who were older who are mature citizens. And the one thing that it crosses all political lines is unease and dissatisfaction and worry.